perhaps we can get started. Uh, my name is Doug Taylor. I'm the president of the Manitoba Historical Society. Um, I was going to say I um, hope the gods are going to be with us today and, uh, and we don't get any rain. Yesterday was, was beautiful and today it's still holding out with no rain. We have a really uh, interesting program as you obviously can see. What I'd like to do at this moment is just introduce some of, uh, some of our honorary guests who are present and uh, the people on the front uh, row who will be saying some things about uh, Mr. W.L. Morton before we unveil the plaque. Our, our honorary guests today are Mrs. G.E. Phillips, uh, Miss Ann Morton, the daughter of the late W.L. Morton, Dr. and Mrs. E.G. Berry, Mr. Peter and Mrs. Vera Fast, Ms. Shirley Ann Smith, and uh, I would like, uh, I guess, at the very start, just to mention that uh, we have uh, Mrs. W.L. Morton, and we have Mrs. Johnson, the daughter of... Uh, W, uh, our sister of W.L. Morton. On our front uh, uh, row, I'd like to introduce the guests that we have here today. Uh, Mr. Ozzie Witten, just behind me, and Mrs. Edith Adam Adamson uh, in the front. Uh, we have Mr. Brian Pallister, who's a member of the legislature for Portage La Prairie. Uh, the Honorable Charles Mayer yet isn't here, but perhaps he, he will come shortly. Mr. Duncan uh, Broadfoot is the Reeve of the Rural Municipality of Westbourne. Mr. Lyle Fox, Deputy Mayor of the Town of Gladstone. Mr. Jerry Friesen from the Department of History, the University of Manitoba. And Mr. Jock Bates, Department uh, or the, from the Manitoba Heritage Council. As we talk quickly, uh, we should say at the very beginning, too, that I think in uh, in, it, in our invitation that was sent out from the Heritage Council that in case of rain we were going to hold this at the the W.L. Morton Collegiate. Of course that is an error. It is the William Morton Collegiate Institute. So we wanted to make sure that uh, everyone understood that it, it was an error. Um, W.L. Morton uh, is not part of that institute. Um, I'd like to, if I may, invite uh, to start our program, Mr. Ozzie Witten and Mrs. Edith Adamson uh, from the Gladstone District Museum uh, to sing O Canada for us this afternoon. Will you join with us as we sing, please? Oh, oh Canada. Our home and native land, true patriot love, in all our sons command. With glowing hearts we see thee rise, the true north strong and free. And stand on guard, O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. God keep our land glorious and free. O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. That's the rumbling in the background. I'd like to invite uh, Mr. Brian Pallister, uh, the member of the legislature for Portage La Prairie, to, to bring greetings to us. Mr. Pallister? Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's an honor and a privilege for me to uh, join with you today in the official unveiling of this plaque uh, dedicated to William Lewis Morton. The Honorable Bonnie Mitchelson, who is the Minister of uh, Culture, Heritage and Citizenship, has asked me to extend to you her regrets at being unable to attend today and to offer her best wishes as well as we commemorate the many contributions of W.L. Morton. I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome members of the Morton family who are here with us today. And I would also like to extend a special thank you to our hosts 
the Gladstone District Museum and also to the Manitoba Historical Society for organizing this commemorative plaque unveiling ceremony today. Having been a resident of Gladstone in the in the 70s and having taught at the uh, at the William Morton Collegiate, uh, not named after this W. L. Morton, but this W. L. Morton's father, I understand. Uh, I know that uh, Professor Morton was born in the Gladstone area, and I recognize his many valued contributions as a historian, as I was a history teacher when I was in, in Gladstone. And so I think this is certainly a very appropriate setting for his commemorative plaque. W. L. Morton was, without doubt, one of Canada's most eminent and respected historians. His long and impressive list of achievements stand as a testament to his dedication as a historian, as well as his genuine interest in the historical development of Manitoba and, in fact, of all of Canada. His distinguished career as a professor and as a scholar spanned almost half a century, and I'm sure that most of us have come across his historical writings at one time or another. Perhaps one of the most significant aspects of Professor Morton's writings is their broad range and their diverse topics. At the time of his death, he had written or edited 16 books and more than 50 articles on topics ranging from, from local and regional history to national life and values. W. L. Morton's primary strength as a historian was his ability to capture history in time and to pass it on from generation to generation. As he himself said, history is not an academic mystery. It's what the community thinks about itself, how it sorts out ideas. Through his dedicated efforts as a professor and through his lifelong commitment to researching, recording and preserving our nation's history, William Lewis Morton played an integral role in helping all of us to understand the development of our province and our country. And I believe, certainly as he did, that our understanding of the past will better enable us to understand and appreciate the present and the future. Professor Morton is remembered with respect, admiration, and tremendous affection by all who knew him, whether as students, as friends, or family. He was honored throughout his lifetime, and I am delighted to share in honoring him again today. Today's commemorative plaque is a testament to W. L. Morton, a Manitoban who used his extraordinary talents to enhance the lives of all Manitobans, indeed, of all Canadians. Thank you for allowing me to join with you today. Thank you, Brian. I'd like to invite Mr. Duncan Broadfoot, please, uh, the Reeve of the Rural Municipality of Westbourne. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, honored guests, Morton family members, ladies and gentlemen. It's truly an honor to represent the Rural Municipality of Westbourne on this occasion. I may, might say that the Morton family itself is part of the major history of this municipality, one of the first municipalities in this province. Mr. Morton's grandfather, Thomas, was the treasurer and later became the MPP for the Gladstone District. Along with his grandfather, his father, William, also served as a councillor and reeve of this municipality. He also served as the MLA and the cabinet member of the government of Manitoba. Mr. Morton's history itself is richly entwined with our municipality, and we are truly proud of our native son. Mr. Morton had achieved recognition worldwide by his excellence in its recording of history and the teaching of the same, some of which his own family members have created. I would like to congratulate the committee for making the effort to honor our native son in this manner, Mr. William Mort Lewis Morton. And I'd like to thank you for having me here today. Thank you very much. Mr. Lyle Fox, uh, Deputy Mayor, Town of Gladstone. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, I'd like to uh, welcome uh, the Martin family and honored guests, ladies and gentlemen. Um, as deputy mayor of the town, uh, Frank advised me uh, 
just shortly ago that uh, he was umping today and he wanted me to be here to represent the town. Uh, I'd like to thank all the people involved for uh, uh, making it possible to have this plaque here and unveiling today and uh, it's uh, in, indeed an honor. And uh, so again, uh, greetings from the town of Gladstone and the uh, Council of Gladstone. Thank you. I'd like to, to invite now uh, Jerry Friesen uh, from the Department of History at the University of Manitoba. Jerry? Mr. Chairman, Mrs. Morton, Mrs. Johnson, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen. It's uh, a pleasure to be here because Bill was one of the most distinguished faculty members at our university and in our department. He's a man who made our department known and our university known, not just across the country, but around the world. He was a graduate of our university. He taught in its colleges and then in the department for 31 years, from 1935 to 1966, when he went to Trent University. But then he came back to the University of Manitoba after he'd retired from Trent, and that's when I got to know him in the last few years of his life, and so I, I feel as if I know him quite well and uh, very much appreciated uh, the chance to get to know him. Bill, first of all, I think, should be remembered because he was one of the hardest workers you could ever imagine. And one of the interesting things about this plaque is that it's probably the first occasion when brain work has been honored with a plaque in Manitoba. We always, <clears throat> we always think about the work with hand and, and, and eye and so on, but Bill was one of those who obviously labored with, with brain and pen. And he worked harder than ordinary mortals. Uh, you may not know this, but when I got to know him later in life, I asked him how he could produce as much as he did, because he did all the normal teaching, all the normal administering, all the committees, the department chairmanship, and all those other things. But he also was writing all the time. And his answer was that he got up around five and set himself a target of 500 or 1,000 words, and that was it for the day, and he would do it, and he did it every day. And so his, his, his was an exceptional labor, and thus an appropriate kind of, of a, a thing to recognize with an historical plaque. The other thing I'd like to say about Bill is that he was such a dedicated member of this Gladstone, but also Manitoba and Canadian community. Bill wrote in order to define and imagine for us what the community means. Bill, and, and this is on the plaque that you'll see in a few minutes, was one of those people who imagined for us what it is to be a member of Gladstone, of Manitoba, of Canada. And what strikes me most about that writing is how, in a way, with a small p, political it was. Now, there's no denying that Bill was also a large C conservative, or that his father before him was a large L liberal. And Bill actually left the party in 1946 over a civil rights issue involving Mackenzie King and some spy trials. But when he became a conservative, he also remained a very pragmatic man. And when I think about Bill's writing, I think of the way he imagined politically the community to be. And I wish still he was around with us to comment to us, as he used to do over coffee, Quebec separatism, globalization, I'd love to have his words of wisdom. I'd love to have him talking to Charlie Mayer this afternoon. I'm sorry, Bill isn't here, and Charlie wouldn't be here to hear the messages that he would bring. Bill was rooted in this place, Gladstone. One of the last things he wrote in 1986 describes his childhood in this district, in this town. And if it isn't something widely circulated in Gladstone, I'm going to urge the museum to get it and make it available to you because it's a wonderful article about his childhood, about the horses, about a boy's contributions on the farm, about going to school in town, and so on. Ironically, one of the first big things he wrote in 1946, 40 years earlier, was also about this town, a book written with his sister called Third Crossing, which in several of his chapters captures Gladstone better than almost anything else could. 
In June, he says, in one of the parts of the last section of a chapter, the flowing water in the White Mud River with jackfish and suckers coming down from the headwaters of the escarpment, where little boys would play in deep pools of water, where slow eddies invited ecstatically lazy youth to float and watch the overhanging trees and the slow drift of clouds. You see, he had a way with words and a way to imagine a place. It's really quite striking. So, Bill Morton was a great Manitoban, not in the sense simply that he worked hard or he worked with his brain and those things, although he was good at those things, but that he defined or imagined what it is we live in, what our community is, helped us to understand who we are, what the boundaries of our place are, and what it is, what it means to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Um, I'd like to invite uh, Mr. Jock Bates uh, from the Manitoba Heritage Council, uh, giving us this afternoon a historical perspective uh, of, of this commemoration. Mr. Taylor, members of the Morton family, ladies and gentlemen, like Brian Pallister, I'd also like to bring some greetings, but on a more personal level, to Mrs. W. L. Morton. Her term on the Manitoba Heritage Council, which was then called the Historic Sites Advisory Board of Manitoba, overlapped with the start of mine. One of our responsibilities on the council is working on and approving the inscriptions on provincial historical plaques. I don't know if Mrs. Morton had anything to do with the plaque to be unveiled today, but for a number of years after her term expired, she helped shape the wording of inscriptions on a number of other Manitoba plaques as an active member of the council's inscriptions committee. The main role of the council is to make recommendations to the Minister of Culture, Heritage and Citizenship about the historical significance of sites, events, buildings, and in this case, people of our province. In the case of Professor Morton, there is absolutely no debate within the council about his importance as a Manitoban and Canadian. Morton stands in the first rank of Canadian historians. As a Manitoban, perhaps his most significant contribution to his country was his stress on the importance of our heritage and traditions. That is, our roots, our communities, our environment, <clears throat> the rhythm of the seasons, and other local, provincial, and regional factors as influences on our history. His ability to convey these influences in his written work produced some of the finest books ever written on Canadian history. More than 35 years after he was published, Manitoba, a history, has not been surpassed as a work of scholarship or in its deep understanding of the forces that shaped the history of a Canadian province. Closely related was his insistence that the local, provincial and regional experience, that is of his home community here in Gladstone, of Manitoba and the Prairie West, was just, were just as important as so-called national factors in looking at the Canadian past. This point of view was somewhat novel when Professor Morton began to develop it many years ago, but it's now much more widely accepted and has influenced strongly the way we look at ourselves and at Canada. Although uh, Professor Morton was well known for his work on Manitoban and Canadian issues, he was just as devoted to local community history and to encouraging interest in community heritage. He helped to revive the Manitoba Historical Society in the 1940s and turn it into an important factor in the cultural life of Manitoba. Under his influence and leadership, the society extended its interests to all levels of Manitoba society and began programs of assistance to local historical societies and museums. It's surely no accident that his first written work was Third Crossing, which Jerry Friesen has already mentioned. For despite his many years at the University of Manitoba in Winnipeg, he spoke, wrote, and thought as a native of Gladstone. His points of view, the things he used, his measurements, his standards, all came from here and were shaped by the people and environment of this community. In fact, these twin strands of his life, his origins in Gladstone and his accomplishments as a historian and teacher, contributed to a dilemma that arose after Professor Morton was recognized as a person of major historical significance in Manitoba. This was where to put up the plaque that would be installed in his memory and honor. There were three choices. In no order of importance, they were at the University of Manitoba or right here in Gladstone. The third choice was to put up two plaques, one at each place. This last option was ruled out because it could have created a bad precedent. But of the other two choices, either could appropriately have been selected. This in itself is a tribute to Professor Morton's life. 
In our discussion within the Heritage Council, however, it was noted that universities, such as the U of M, have a number of ways to, to commemorate famous members and, and academic excellence. By contrast, his, Professor Morton's stature across Canada stemmed in great measure from his Manitoba and regional perspective, which would be much more faithfully illustrated by a plaque located here in Gladstone. In addition, placing the plaque here would stimulate encouragement of local heritage awareness. It was therefore decided, almost unanimously, to approach this community to determine interest in locating the plaque in Gladstone. I'm sure I speak for everyone on the Heritage Council in expressing pleasure in the choice that was made and in the fact that both local and provincial recognition has been given to an outstanding Manitoban. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Jock. I'd like to invite uh, Mr. Jock Bates again, uh, along with uh, Mrs. W. L. Morton and Mrs. Johnson. Uh, to unveil the plaque before us this afternoon. The inscription reads, William Lewis Morton, 1908 to 1980. Born near Gladstone and land homesteaded by his father's parents, W. L. Morton became one of Canada's most distinguished writers of history. He graduated from the University of Manitoba in 1932 and became a Rhodes Scholar at Oxford. He was Professor of History at the University of Manitoba for over 25 years and served as the first provost of University College from 1963 to 1966. Later, at Trent University, he became Master of Champlain College, Vanier Professor of History, and Chancellor. Always working to know the past as a living presence, Morton encouraged Manitobans to see how their common inheritance shaped the life of their province. Where so much was unchanged and ceaseless change, he wrote, the environment and the past, geography and history, were constant and tireless artisans of Manitoba, Manitoban life. He believed that the historian's duty was not simply to acquire facts, but to create and share an imaginative vision of the nation in which we live. Morton's contributions to Canada were recognized in 1969 when he was invested as an officer in the Order of Canada. Okay, just to do. Not a speech. I just want to say thank you to all those responsible for this today, and a very special thanks for Bill. Just, just in closing, uh, I'd like to say a few words uh, as the president of the Manitoba Historical Society. I don't know if, if W. L. Morton's aim was to make a difference, and perhaps we all in this world try to make a difference. Um, I know uh, I never had a class from him. Uh, I know of him, certainly. I know that he was a very humble man. I know that he was very soft-spoken. I know certainly that as a, a graduate student myself at the University of Manitoba, one quickly comes to respect what Mr. W. L. Morton uh, represented. Uh, I believe fervently, as I think uh, all the people before us this afternoon reasserted, that Mr. W. L. Morton certainly did make a difference. Uh, as the president of the Manitoba Historical Society, uh, 40 years after uh, W. L. Morton, W. L. Morton was the, uh, a past president, 1953 to 1955, um, and I'm currently the president, uh, I constantly look uh, in awe of what Mr. W. L. Morton represents and I truly find this uh, a great honor uh, that I, along with the Heritage Council, um, the Manitoba Historical Society, uh, come to Gladstone, um, certainly his, his base, his hometown, um, and certainly uh, I'm extremely proud to be here. Um, I'd like to a special tribute to, to Mr. Ozzy Witten uh, and the, the Gladstone District Museum for, for 
for sponsoring this, for, for putting on this afternoon this particular uh, commemoration. Um, I'm told that everyone here present is invited for refreshments uh, on the inside. Uh, please come closer, have, uh, have a look at the plaque. Uh, have an opportunity to speak to some of our guests and obviously Mrs. W.L. Morton and Mrs. Johnson, um, please uh, participate. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, it really is an honored day and one that, uh, that will be in, a, in my memory for a very long time. Thank you very much.